Oh my god, guys. I have been wanting to watch this video for days. But I haven't been streaming since it came out. And I've saved it for a blind, partial reaction. Just a taste. Just a little bit of a taste for those of you guys who haven't seen the video already to get your appetites wet for the rest of it. So you go and click on the original video, drop a like, a sub, and a view, most importantly. Um, go watch the original video. The link is in the chat. Here is a link. Boop. Here is another link in YouTube chat. Boop. There will be a link in the description. Go watch the original, because we're not watching all of it now. But we are going to watch part of it. I think I'll have a lot to say on it. Not only that, but this guy makes fantastic content. Pillar of Garbage. Great channel. Massively underrated. Finally, he's broken past my sub count. Last I checked, Pillar of Garbage had less subs than me, which was really upsetting. Like, listen, I could get jealous about sub counts, but Pillar of Garbage objectively deserves more subs than me. Like, Pillar of Garbage makes such good arguments. It's like, please, get bigger. Grow past me. I need more people to be watching you and hearing your arguments. They are so good and well put together. I love this guy's channel. Like, this is one of the few lefty content creators, or content creators in general, that I still fanboy for. Because I, I have a such a nice time watching every video, and the arguments are always so well-reasoned, succinct, and there's very little, like, cringe, hyper, ideological arguments. It's literally just, here's an objective breakdown of the lies of, like, these grifter conservatives. Anyway, made a video called Across the Grifterverse. It came out four days ago. Let's watch. Part of it. Maybe five to ten minutes of it. A lot of the worst guys online know each other. They're friends or colleagues or ex-colleagues. And they're all kind of... Do you, this was the case? If not as much, maybe more so during Gamergate. I feel that is what made Gamergate so pivotal. Is it was a wide variety of YouTubers, some of and content creators on different platforms, making vaguely, if not hardcore, right wing content, all from different angles, different branding, different like it's a different voice and face saying the same shit, but it's such a wide net being thrown that just by sheer numbers, it's influential and massive. That's what Gamergate was, and that's what's been effectively recreated in this current era of online political discourse uh, with the Grifterverse, as we call them now, I guess. I, I love that term, the Grifterverse. Helping each other out. I made a video a couple of months back about that, starting with a few anonymous seeming articles about how X-Men was going woke that were being shared around and tracing them, the sites publishing them and the writers penning them, back to a semi-organized network of right-wing influencers and moneyed backers. I'd recommend you watch that video. This is a fairly direct follow-up, but the nutshell version of it is that when it comes to the major online voices whining about wokeness destroying cinema or gaming or Kathleen Kennedy that sweet baby incorporated this blah blah blah, pick out any- X-Men was always kind of woke though, right? I mean, X-Men was an analogy, like the original X-Men run was an analogy, or not analogy, a, uh, uh, uh what's the word for it? A, um... Uh, uh, it was meant to be, like, inspired by the civil rights movement. Um, a lot of the villains, an allegory, yes. A lot of the villains are supposed to be, like, very heavy parodies of real-life politicians that were against the civil rights movement, while many of the, like, good guys that advocate for mutant rights are, like, stand-ins for real-life civil rights activists. They It was a lot more on the nose in early runs of the X-Men comics, but that is the core of X-Men, is that, like, it, it is meant to be a representation of a minority group fighting for acceptance, safety, security, and rights, and autonomy. Um, and, and that is fundamentally what the story of X-Men is about. No matter, like, how many supervillains they fight that are just cool bad guys, um, which is awesome, the origin of the X-Men, the point of the X-Men existing is the mutant's mutual struggle. Specific one of them, and there's a pretty good chance you'll find personal or professional connections to the rest of them, or even organizations like Glenn Beck's The Blaze or Turning Point USA, and so on. Here's a clip. Back when Eric was making his name, he was also pushed heavily by John F. Trent, who's oh, now yeah. signal-boosting Della Rose and Fandom Pulse, and who streamed with Nerdrotic, who himself, yep, streamed with Eric, and Ryan, and Garrett, and Benny, and Gavin, and Climate Change. 
to be fair, like ev- every everything is connected because like I like Gavin McGinnis has been a guest on PKA, um, which obviously insufferable to watch. Uh, but PKA has had like everybody as a guest. PKA has had like fucking Hank Green on as a guest before. Um, so like you you could make the argument then that like there's a connection there, but obviously the case he's making isn't just a. They've had an interaction. They have talked. They have. It's more so. This is a support network. There is evidence of support, backing, and um, uh, like shoutouts. Right. The same argument was made back during GamerGate, and it was oftentimes met with like snide remarks and a refusal to take the argument seriously, as I'm sure it will be today. Deny a Russia simp Republican president. See the comments of this video to prove my statement right. I imagine. Potential hopeful Vivek Ramaswamy. You know, that sort of thing. That video got a pretty good response, I think. It's doing okay views wise. You guys seem to like it. Dan Slot shared it. I know some people don't love all the stuff he's written, but I don't know, man. I bought a lot of his Spider Man books when I was younger. Spider Island was the bomb diggity. So that was mega cool for me. The video even led one of the main goobers in question to EFAP it. His words, by the way, not mine. And then falsely accused me of deleting comments. But in some of the places that video was shared, a few responses- I- I can assure you Pillar of Garbage doesn't delete comments. I, uh... I- I've read the comments before. There are... Many... Old comments, like- like, at any given time, like, as- Like, ones that were posted within an hour of the video's upload that are still there hate comments. If he was deleting comments, he wouldn't just delete some. Unless they were, like, doxing or something. I mean, that- that would be understandable, or like hyper abusive ones saying like I'm gonna fucking kill you or something. Like that makes sense, but I, I don't I don't think he's deleting just critic critical comments or even hate comments because I've seen his comment section before. This has seemed kinda nonplussed. Some of you were kinda like, yeah, we knew this. This isn't new information. And you know, I guess it wasn't if you had already gone down that rabbit hole yourself. Most people haven't though. And the problem comes when the passive viewer hears these voices and doesn't even realize the there's a rabbit hole. To- Is that Taliesin from Taliesin and Evatel? Maybe they just look really similar. I don't know why that guy just looks a lot like Taliesin from Taliesin and Evatel, the WoW channel, the WoW couple. They're like my go-to for WoW content, not gonna lie to go down. What I was really trying to do there was represent the odyssey of discovery anyone could go on from any given discourse flare-up. So if it wasn't related to one of those woke X-Men articles, I didn't really bring it up. And that's why I didn't go any further in that video, but this is a different video. So let's go just a little further and expand her web, which as we know, connects them all. First though, a uh, PSA. People trying to profit off Okay, Pillar of Garbage makes great content, but the stock footage is making me laugh hard. Okay, I, I, I assume that's not like a serious criticism, but like, I want you to imagine you're in a situation and you want to make a video where you are talking about a topic like this. It's in depth. You're going to produce like after editing about 18 minutes of reading, of narrative, of like, of, of like your speaking on the issue. You can't just have yourself talking into the camera, or it's going to be boring, and you need to show things on screen. You will very quickly find yourself in a situation where it's like, fuck, okay, I... The video is just not catchy, or, like, entertaining to watch in this state. I need to, like, make sure there is constantly switching something on screen. Unfortunately, that is the, like, necessary thing you have to do for your content to succeed online. Attention spans are short. And there needs to be at least a veneer of high production value, even if it is, you know, just simple stock footage being cut together. But these videos are high quality regardless. I'm just saying, you know, like, it, I feel like that's a very cheap criticism or, or, or a cheap, like, issue to have with it. I don't know. It's not everyone does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah of your attention and anger aren't the only online dangers. The only thing more valuable than your clicks is your data, and there's a ton out We'll let the sponsor play because I want uh, I want I want Pillar of Garbage to make money. I, I like I like when good people make money and the bad people are making the most money. And so if Pillar of Garbage, who is good, makes more money, then that will make me happier. Uh, even if it's not me getting it, I I just want to see someone good make more money than uh, 
than the bad people that are grifting millions off of YouTube right now. So yeah, go go check out the sponsor. Click the link, actually. I think there's going to be a sponsor link. Wait, hold on. Can I? <sighs> Wait. Make a freezy difference tab for trees. Check out my Patreon, YouTube membership, major sources, web pages, videos. No, I need I need the there's gotta be a sponsor link, right? Hold on, we'll wait. We'll see if they're what the sponsor is, and I assume it's gonna be a VPN. I'll just click the sponsor link, that's all you have to do, and I think it makes it helps. Aura.com slash pillar of garbage. That's it? Ride the Rails just posted it. Here, I'll, I'll repost it in both chats so you guys know what link is, is the one. Apparently, that is the link. That is the sponsor link Pillar of Garbage is using. Guys, simply clicking that link and opening the page and, like, having it open for, like, 5 to 10 seconds means that, like, the sponsor sees a high amount of engagement from this channel, and that means that Pillar of Garbage can request or even just be offered higher payouts from the sponsor and may potentially get more sponsor offers. All it takes is clicking the sponsor link. So please take some time to just click it, keep it open for five seconds, close it. It helps, even if just a few of you do. Not there. That's where this video's sponsor, Aura, comes in. I googled my name, and right there is oh, my it's employment not a data, school history, a old social scrubber. media accounts, and so on. And just the No, this is actually a good service. I'm, I'm sure maybe there are better ones, but like, this is a good service. It's a data scrubber. Um, these have existed for a while and have gotten more and more popular and uh, easy to access. Uh, chances are, over the course of like a million different companies' data breaches, a bunch of your personal info is just out there in the ether, and you could pot potentially find it, and it could be used by malicious actors, potentially for even identity theft. That's the scariest thing. So this, uh, this uh, uh, program slash company will scrub the internet for your data, and they will submit legal requests uh, harassingly to places that are hosting your personal information to take it down. And it's just easier to take the info down than to actually fight it in court and to deal with the constant harassments. They tend to go with it. So you can scrub like nearly 95% of your currently existing available data that's just out there off the internet, potentially. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a valuable service if that's a problem for you, if that's a worry for you. Imagine how much is out there that I can't see. Well, you don't have to imagine. Aura shows you which data brokers are selling your info and automatically submits opt-out requests for you, reducing the amount of Not spam you're going to get and protecting crawler, you from weird. hackers who could exploit those brokers' laxity to compromise your accounts. You might have missed this, but AT&T recently revealed that over 73 million customer records, both existing and former customers, were released on the dark web. Rip all Sony users, by the way. How many fucking times? I, I bet my my data has probably been like leaked by Sony data breaches like eight times. They recommended those affected use strong passwords, monitor account activity, and consider credit freezes. And guess what? Aura can do all of that for you, and way more. I mean, just look, way more. Protect your privacy. Go to my link at aura.com slash pillar of garbage to start your two week free trial. But anyway, time to return to that other set of online predators Click and go across the Griftiverse. Words are flowing out like woke Mary Sue objective Wait. truth. They Is that pillar of garbage singing? Holy shit. Don't mean much, but nothing ever does across the Griftiverse. That goes hard. That goes hard. A custom-made little song jingle intro goes crazy. That goes fucking crazy. Lauren Chen. All right. Lauren Chen. We'll start small. I noted some of this in March's longer video, the main X-Men were always woke one, but for the sake of completeness, last time we looked at three instances of article format pearl ringing, and while the first two slotted into our web from both an organizational and authorship perspective, Fandom Pulse and Bounding into Comics, John Della Rose and John F. Trent, we only really focused on that last one, the Blaze article, as relevant because of the Blaze, the Glenn Beck of it all, the links we see to other reactionaries via that platform. Platform. But hey, guess what also? Lauren Chen, the Blaze contributor whose words make up the majority of that article. Do you think Lauren Chen is also streaming from an office that's like in the Blaze? Like, do you think the Blaze has like an office building? Lauren Chen streams and records from it, and it's also just like um, Brett Cooper's office meant to look like she's just some e-girl streamer making videos in her bedroom, but it's actually just an office? I wonder. 
Her her background looks far more convincing as an actual room's background to me than what Brett Cooper had going on. That was just so clearly a staged fake room. But like, I, I wonder, because she's part of the Blaze. That's a big organization. It's like Daily Wire sized, if not like a little smaller. Content. She's also worked for Charlie Kirk's Turning Point USA, same place as figures like Benny Johnson and Jack Posobiec. Also, we probably glossed over Chen herself a little too much. Like some of the other guys we talked about, she's a Christian nationalist. That's not my label, by the way, it's hers. One who's sympathetically platformed dudes like noted white nationalist Richard Spencer and Stefan Molyneux. Isn't that fun? She streamed with Sargon of Dumb Name not long ago. She's worked with Prager Hugh, making a video for them about feminism bad, and I don't- I just feel like we should call him Carl. Don't let him, like, have the, like, pretentious historical figure's name. Like, ju just call him Carl. He's Carl of a- he he's Carl of... Bristol? Where the fuck does he come from? We should just call him Carl of and his hometown. I hope it's a funny-sounding British town. Please tell me it's a funny-sounding British town. Where's he from? Like, Carl of Bristol? Carl of, of Wellington? Carl of Swindon? No way. No way. No way, it's Swindon? That's- that cannot be the name. Swindon? It's Carl of Swindon! That goes fucking crazy! Oh my god. Oh, Carl of Swindon. Oh, we're calling him that from now on. Oh, he can suck my balls dry if he's mad about it. This one's gonna shock you, but she's also streamed with Nerdrotic and friends a whole bunch. But alright, you probably hadn't heard of Lauren Chen or some of those other people. You want something juicy? Carl of Applebee's! Yeah, let me see what I can do. Alex Jones. Speaking of Nerdrotic and the YouTube gang, we can, through them, add another little face to our web. Infowars' own Alex Jones. I feel like Alex Jones and, like, his supporter base is the perfect example of how there is no, like, depth at which the bar can drop where the right will, like, disown you, right? Like, it truly- you truly have to be gay and a pedophile for them to drop you. Being one or the other won't, like, be enough to do it. Like, you have to be both. That is truly, like, the only case I've seen in which the right will cancel one of their own because of where they, they just, they're just like, you've done something so bad we won't support you anymore. And that's only temporary. Milo Yiannopoulos came back from that. Zan, you said that, but Nick Fuentes, yeah, that's true. Nick Fuentes is gay and a pedophile. Yeah, that's true. Allegedly. Uh, allegedly. And I won't have to for a few years since I got food and stuff. But I'm literally looking at my neighbors now and going, am I ready to hang them up and gut them and skin them and chop them up? And you know what? I'm ready. My daughters aren't starving to death. I'll eat my I will eat your neighbors. Your neighbors just type in Pentagon tested gay bomb on Iraq. I don't like them putting chemicals in, chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay. Now let's see how close I was. The water that turned the turn friggin', the friggin frogs, frogs, frogs gay. gay. Ugh, ugh, serious crap. Oh, crap. I'm sick of being social engineered. It's not funny. I'm sick of being social engineered. It's not funny. Oh, it's so perfect because we have the same name, Alex. Hey. Not just because he's streaming. My neighbors are probably terrified right now hearing my Alex Jones impression just reverberate, hearing it from the basement. <laughs> uh, I hope I've got good enough sound dampening. With them, although yes, obviously he has streamed with them a couple of times, but because of a little channel called Nerd Wars. Nerd Wars is a uh, channel shoveling out both generic shorter chud content and these longer compilation pieces. You know, to be fair, going from like AI slop thumbnails are less cringe to me now than those low effort copy pasted like one image from Google uh, images and then kept like the black bar along like the side left corner or quarter of the uh, screen and then just filled it with text for like this most simple five second thumbnail content farm videos you can imagine like these these feel like they like even typing in the prompt feels like it's more work than like the average yellow flash or quartering thumbnail right which the channel very generously labels documentaries largely compilations of clips from just all of the usual suspects here this is the first 10 or so seconds of one of their big videos even though we created this nerd culture the marxist colonist who invaded and bastardized everything 
are portraying us as the villains. You're aware you're gatekeeping right now, right? Ah, uh, that sounds like- God, I haven't seen that video since literally 2016. Holy shit. The last time I saw this video was in a Chris Ray Gun anti-SJW song parody video. That is probably unlisted now because Chris Ray Gun's embarrassed by a lot of those videos. <laughs> Low key. They're they're kind of bangers though. He should he should keep them up. They're kind of bangers. Um like I feel like if he just did like a video making fun of some of the politics in them and just said, yeah, but they kind of go hard, so I'll keep them up. Just know that this is my position on them now. I feel like it'd be fine. Um, but yeah, I, I I just I have not seen this clip in literally fucking. Oh my god, eight years! Like it, it's been eight years, right? Yeah. Eight years it's been since I've seen this clip. Fuck. What a blast from the past. This is peak Gamergate, like, uh, content mill uh, videos. I guess these will always get resurfaced time and time again. When do you think people are going to start saying, why are the videos so grainy? Like, when are phones going to get so good and cameras get so good that when people show a video like this, they start to wonder, why is the video so grainy? <laughs> like, why wouldn't it be higher quality? How old is this? That it's not like Ultra HD 8K or something. Bring us as the villains. You're aware you're gatekeeping right now, right? Ah, uh, that sounds like something a fake fan would say. And let oh me my just God. tell you, Attack once you've on seen Titan. one snippet of a Nerd Wars documentary, you've seen the whole thing. The tone of the following hours of editorialized clips and vague us versus them voiceover snippets tying them together is exactly what you're expecting. Yeah, this guy just makes like incomprehensible meme compilations of like edited scenes from like shows that are supposed to be woke to make them look even woker. One fun thing about Nerd Wars is the way they're a little more willing to say the quiet parts a little louder. For instance, in my videos talking about YouTube crypto fascism, we've come up against the cultural Marxism conspiracy theory a few times, and the way it serves as the template for a lot of the generic anti-woke rhetoric. The way these guys will often take the Marxists have infiltrated cultural institutions and are destroying the West idea and kind of change the details. You know, the whole copy my homework but don't make it obvious thing. But Nerd Wars? They will just come out and tell you it is the Marxists, actually. Our culture doesn't have a toxic fan problem. We have a toxic- Man, isn't it hilarious how- I love that we're watching Rings of Power after this stream. I'm so excited for the watch party. I- 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 I swear to God, my enjoyment of Rings of Power actually literally has nothing to do with the right's hatred of it. Like, I went into the show expecting to hate it. I watched episode one, booted that shit up for the first time, expecting to sit for an hour and a half and be mad, just angry. I was expecting to live tweet, live rage hate tweet about the show and how much, how bad it is on my, like, as I'm watching it. And instead I was like engrossed, hypnotized and blown, my expectations blown away. I was not expecting it to be good. Man, I, I love that there's a season two and the show does well despite these people. Toxic creator problem, a toxic actor problem, and definitely a toxic Twitter problem. But ultimately, we have a Marxist problem. So now, if you have an opinion, and if you have passion, and if you say anything that doesn't line up with it, you are a troll, and they're going to dismiss you as that. So Geeks and Gamers has made combined video topics of Brie Larson and Captain Marvel. If you search that on his channel using keywords Captain Marvel or Brie Larson combined hundreds of videos. No repeats. If you, like, all of the content he has that is ostensibly about Brie Larson, Geeks and Gamers over the last, like, what, four or five years? Hundreds of videos on Brie Larson and or Captain Marvel. Hundreds. You can go to the Geeks and Gamers channel, and then you can go to videos, and there's a little search bar, like a little, like, magnifying glass bar. Search Brie Larson and then just scroll for a while. And then when you're done, when it stops showing videos that have anything to do with Brie Larson, keep scrolling a little while longer because sometimes more will come up and YouTube just gets weird like that and, and starts showing unrelated stuff and there's more related to your search further down. But then once that stops happening, go all the way back up and search Captain Marvel and then watch as 
hundreds of different videos from the ones you just saw scroll by. Some repeats, but most of them different. Because he has literally made damn near 500 videos combined about Brie Larson slash Captain Marvel. And that's not even counting his other channels. That's just on Geeks and Gamers. Points for straightforwardness, I guess? Look, I'm not going to break down all the content. Funnily enough, Astral Flick Variety Show, I am actively playing through the Mad Max game off stream. And yes, I've seen the movies, all of them. And uh, I have, although not the new Furiosa movie, because I don't, I'm not going to a theater. Uh, and that's most people's. Like, I'm not going to a theater, and that's why the movie's doing bad right now. The right's claiming it's because it's gone woke, but I have a feeling it's going to be one of those things where it comes out on streaming and everyone's watching about it or watching it and talking about it, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, this show blew up after the fact. It's like, yeah, no shit. No one goes to theaters anymore. ...of this channel. Even just watching all this stuff would turn me into a gibbering wreck of a man. I'm just going to cite a video by actual fandom digging into the story of this channel, which is of course linked below, and mention the way it seems to have been established after an Alex Jones Friday Night Tights guest spot. The way the presenter looks a great deal like an Infowars employee, or at least an Infowars affiliate, and the way the channel's very liberal use of chud content seems to have been allowed and endorsed by some within Nerdrotic Sphere. To be clear, the people featured here have all the tools they'd need on the YouTube backend to take these videos down if not. And yes, we don't have the receipts for all of the featured creators. Well, no, it's, it's all a big circle. Like, whether it's organized or not, it's always been this way. It's just that when the right is at its strongest, it's the most obvious that there's like a massive fucking community of grifters all working together. I feel during the anti-SJW community, it was far less grifters than it is today. Like, it was such an easy moneymaker that, like, a few people, like, uh, um, the quartering, uh, and, uh, no bullshit originally realized how easy it was to content mill anti-SJW content, and they set the standard. They set, like, the, they were the example makers for everyone that would follow in, in doing this grift. During Gamergate, I genuinely feel far more of these people actually believed this shit and weren't just content milling for money than today. Maybe that's just rose-tinted goggles of the old days, but it felt more genuine back then. It's giving Infowars, sorry, Nerd Wars, the go-ahead for ongoing content reuse. It is certainly true that, in theory, this channel could be reusing these guys' content again and again without their knowledge in videos which reach hundreds of thousands of views. It might just be a coincidence that regular FNT guest Chris- No, I, I think, I think Infowars is effectively hiring these chuds. Mayor has worked for Jones and Infowars in the past, so you know what I'm gonna do? We'll do a different color line on the graphic here. This shade of green can mean, gee, it sure looks like there's a substantial link here, it sure looks like this channel is a calculated astroturfing project designed to nudge that bumper crop of anti-woke audiences nearer to Jones' wavelength without advertising the fact, but I guess we can't be sure. Anyway, that's Nerd War. I feel like that's a perfect point. The fucking halfway point, perfectly in, right when your appetite is whetted, I think that's a good point to cut it off. If you guys want to see the rest, you got to click the link in the description, go watch, and of course like and comment on the original video from Pillar of Garbage. This video has been fantastic so far. I can't wait to watch it off stream when I've got time. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you go check out Pillar of Garbage. I really like his content. It is some of the most well-researched, well made and just like it just gets to the nitty gritty of what these people are about and just says what what it, I wish I could think all of the things he's able to say but he's writing the script out and he gets all the thoughts and points that I would make live if I could just think of them and keep them all straight in my head live right um and, and I love it right he says everything I want to have said uh like when I uh make an argument and I forget to like he covers everything all the points and I love it Highly recommend his channel. Go support him. Go watch the original video and click that sponsor link. It helps him. It does. Hit that sponsor link. Anyway, guys, do the same for me. Comment, subscribe, ring the bell icon. Uh, it really helps me a lot as well. Follow my social medias. Maybe donate, subscribe, or gift us up on my website or support me through my other like links as well, like YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, Patreon, buying merch, all that good stuff. And don't forget, we are about to do a watch party in literally like... 15 minutes, maybe less. So please, 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 before I wrap up stream, join my fan Discord. Please do it. Link in the disc in the uh, website chat and the description of the stream. Join my fan Discord. It's the main hub of my fan base. I, I do watch parties, call on streams, and game events there and announce all my new streams and uploads. So please join. I hope to see you there.
and I hope you enjoyed.